Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my review for Sing 2. Yeah, that's right, of all the movies that I've been seeing uh, lately, like, this is the one that I choose to do a review of. Not something like uh, Spider-Man No Way Home or anything. Um, actually, there's more of a reason for why I didn't do a review of that, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, just simply put to get this out of the way it's at the time i saw it it was opening weekend i didn't want to make a review because i didn't feel like i could talk about it without spoilers so maybe i'll eventually make a review on it but yeah that's why i didn't talk about it when i did and yeah but sing 2 has been out for a bit now so i can talk i feel right about talking about this and i I believe the expression that fits best here is that lightning has struck twice. Um, although it was a little divisive, there were some people who really didn't like it and some people who did. The first Sing movie I thought was really good. I reacted to it on the channel and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, Sing 2 is also really good, if not better. In fact, I would actually say I like it more. Um, because it takes everything that was great about the first movie, from the music to the characters and the plot and everything, and improves on it in pretty much every way. Um, the characters that were there from the first movie are better in this one for the most part. Um, the new characters are fantastic. The story is an improvement on the first one. Everything just works in so many ways. And I'm just really, really much, very much a fan of this. Now, I saw this because my church does this thing where we see every January we go to the movies and see some movies and then they talk about it uh, at the next service. Uh, and so we went to see Sing 2 and yeah, it, it's just... I'm really glad I got to see this in theaters, too, because it's definitely a great experience for that. Um, basically, the gist of it, the simple um, explanation of the plot, is that the crew from before, led by Buster Moon, head to the big city to catch their big break, get a big show going, and try to navigate the challenges that come along with that. That's the most basic uh, idea behind the premise. Um, and, and they really handle it well, um, the people who made the movie and all. It was really, it was paced excellently, it had the right amount of tension, the right amount of conflict, and really handled it all in a way that felt believable. Um, there's also some new characters in this that were really great. Um, I don't remember all of their names. Um... There's this businessman who's really famous and kind of runs the entertainment industry in the town. Um, and is clearly based on that description, our main antagonist slash bad guy for the movie. And he's a wonderful bad guy. Like, he's great as a villain. He's believable. He's threatening. He's entertaining to watch. Um, and, th and then you have his daughter, Portia, who is the best new character by far, and honestly my favorite character in the movie, just period. Uh, Portia is just amazing, but to be fair, I have a bit of a soft spot for her archetype. Portia's archetype, you can probably tell based on the name, honestly, is the spoiled rich girl who turns her life around after realizing basically that she was a spoiled rich girl um, who, who becomes better and just tries to live a more honest life afterwards. Um, even the recent My Little Pony A New Generation movie had this archetype with Princess Pip Petals, um, the sister of Zip Storm and one of the two Pegasus princesses of the movie. Uh, and Pip is one of my favorite characters in that movie, too, only uh, being out by Izzy. Um, I've just always liked this archetype. I just, I, I think it's a fun idea. 
And the characters are usually super entertaining, super funny, and just genuinely really likable. Plus, some of them can be pretty attractive sometimes. <laughs> um, at least the ones of age, of course. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a fun archetype that can really be worked in a fun way. And I definitely think Portia was here. She was an exceptionally enjoyable character to watch on screen. You really get a kick out of her. Um, and, and honestly, you feel that her transformation by the end is genuine. Um, you, you even see little hints at things that are to, that, that characterize her before it's really revealed the kind of struggles she's going with. Because like the first movie, the characters go through some struggles. And that is definitely like showcased the most with another new coming character um clay calloway voiced by bono of u2 clay calloway is kind of the big deal of this movie um in terms of the plot and in terms of characters and, and all in their development he's a former a big name singer who became a recluse after the death of his wife and now the crew are trying to get him to join in their new show which is easier said than done um bono performs wonderfully um both in terms of voice acting and music of course and the character is just exceptionally um empathetic um, you you could just you just feel so much empathy for him. And maybe that's just me because I am very empathetic towards characters going through struggles like that. Um, but you really feel for him and what he's gone through, and you understand why he became such a recluse. Um, and then you see this other new character who becomes a dance coach for Johnny, and she's just she's just fun. She's just nice and fun and likable in that regard. Unfortunately, she's voiced by Letitia Wright, and there's some notable issues in with that. Um, notably, Letitia Wright being an anti-vaxxer and stuff. But I'm not going to get into all of that here. Uh, she does. She is still a good actress, even if she has proven to be kind of a shitty person lately. Um, and she does a good job here. I, I will not deny that. Um, and of course you have all the returning favorites who have great roles in here. You still have Mina, you still have Ash, you still have Johnny and everything. And, and they all do a great job as always. You have some other characters who appear, um, and, and do a great job. Everyone feels like they have a point there's there's one character um who has like the least amount of importance i would say to anything he's just kind of there mostly to push forward another character to um he's kind of like this very self-important self-indulgent uh superstar who's gotten all these awards and constantly brags about it um he works with mina during a lot of the show and everything he's a dumbass and he doesn't really do much or change much he's one of the weaker points of it for sure but he doesn't hurt the movie he's just he's just kind of there he doesn't get a lot of laughs like a lot of the other characters do but he's there he doesn't hurt the movie but he doesn't help it <laughs> he's the weakest part for me for sure um and there's this one character um, who is um, working for the main bad guy. She starts off as kind of this antagonistic force. Um, her name is Suki. She's a dog. Um, she starts off antagonistic but ends up becoming an ally by the end. And she's really pretty. I'm sorry, but <laughs> she has a really, like, aesthetically pretty design. Um, of course, so does Portia, to be fair. Um but it's just like they really kind of went all out on this it's like <laughs> this is kind of a really i feel this would be a really big movie for furries 
Um, and, and of course, myself included in that. Um, I, I'm sure there's plenty of fan art. I'll just say that. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this. The music was great as always. There were some songs in here I really would not have expected to hear and was really happy about that. Uh, like they used uh, Heads Will Roll by the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. And it's like, oh, I would not have ever expected to hear that song here. Uh, they also had uh, Chop Suey by System of a Down, which honestly just made me burst out laughing when it when it came up. Um, which was clearly the intent because that scene was supposed to be funny. Um, but it, it just, I burst out laughing at that. It was really fucking great. <laughs> just the fact that it was in this movie of all songs. Um, it's a great song and I, I, I enjoy System of a Down, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, and the visuals were great too. Like the art and animation was great and... I, I do apologize about the light, by the way, just the time I'm recording this and all. But yeah, the visuals were great. As always, I, I expect that at this point, um, even from Illumination, um, it's not like it's Disney visuals, but still pretty damn good. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was entertaining. I thought it was well-directed, well-written, well well-acted. Like, seriously, Halsey was great as Portia. I, I, I'm not even super familiar with Halsey. I just know, like, maybe a couple songs from her. Uh, but she was fantastic as Portia. Um, re really got me into the character. Um, but yeah, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. So tell me in the comments below, what did you think of Sing 2? And thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See you all next time.